intensive, deep focused hyperthermia, uh, where we can actually heat to the center of the body because of the overlapping beams that we can create from these antennas that can reinforce and create a focal region in the body to heat. Can you demonstrate or give me an example? I see the leg here, so say this would be moved around? Yeah, so we would, if we had a tumor in the leg mm -hmm. in this area, we'd, we'd position this uh, over Where? that area uh -huh. uh, to treat. Uh, we actually fill a water bolus around, a water cuff around the patient so that the antennas will transmit their energy directly through this high dielectric water. It acts kind of like a laser waveguide that directs it inside, not outside. And, uh, uh, and it supports the leg during heating. Uh, the large ones will go over the whole body. Uh -huh. uh, it, uh, and they'll be supported by this structure, so there'll be a water cuff all the way around the way patient around. What kind of cancers them. are we talking about when you say deep focus? What cancers? Uh, uh, cervical cancers. Cervical, uh-huh. Rectal. Okay. Anal, anal, prostate, prostate, um, soft tissue sarcomas, which occur throughout the abdominal uh, region, uh, pelvic, and the limbs. Uh, pelvic, uh, limbs. Okay, and ovarian cancer has been also treated with this, okay. not as much, but some. So anything around the abdominal area? Uh, well, oftentimes ovarian cancer will spread into the abdomen. And so uh, many times when ovarian cancer is used in this, it's when it's spread yeah. and they'll actually treat in the abdominal region. Um, breast cancer? Uh, this, the, the 500 has been used to treat breast cancer okay. primarily. Okay. Uh, very few have applied this uh, system to breast cancer. Okay. Uh, there is, there is a, a small uh, app, antenna applicator that we do have a, that's a complement to this system in Europe that is able to do breast cancer treatments. Mm -hmm. that, that particular antenna or applicator is not available in the United States, but it is being used for breast cancer with this system in Europe. So Paul, let me ask you this. If you had cancer, would you be more willing, apt to come here to the United States or would you go somewhere in Asia or Europe? Well, I have to admit it depends on where the cancer is located and what type of cancer and what stage it's at. And so uh, there, are, there are cancers in more advanced stages that are more commonly applied to this technology. Um, there's always the question of travel and cost and insurance. Will the insurance pay? Yeah. So if someone's thinking of going to Europe and having advanced treatment with, with radiation, let's say in hyperthermia, then they're going to wonder, well, will, will they be reimbursed for the cost? Yeah. Um, and so there's a lot of things that go into that. If, if money was no object, obviously I'd go where I could get the best treatment. Yeah. Good. Okay. Um, <laughs> um, I'm trying to think here. I had a question about the deep. It just seems like you guys have been able to advance because people in Europe are requesting it. Uh, yeah, the, the interest and support in Europe has helped to keep this technology alive and not dead. Uh, in more recent years, Asia has been, uh, China and other countries have been adding this to their treatment regiment and accepting it, uh, Korea as well, uh, that has helped to keep this uh, potential uh, available so that we can stay alive and provide this. Uh, there's always the worry, in the United States there were early on other companies. <coughs> Excuse me. Yeah. Uh, these other companies in the United States, a few that tried to get going, uh, there wasn't enough business and they failed. Because not every, it, it's kind of a vicious cycle. If yeah. nobody knows about it, no one asks about it, physicians yeah. are, so I, I So it's continued that. to be a struggle to keep it alive so the technology doesn't die. Yeah. And so uh, BSD Medical was a company that did not survive. Yeah. Pyrexor came in and, and bought up the assets of BSD Medical and uh, I was available still to help them uh, as a, uh, work through these areas. So the technology still has preserved to this point. But it's not like this is selling everywhere and like, like it's a very popular thing to sell. It's just a difficult thing to, to get this accepted, even in the United States or Europe yeah. or Asia. It is one of those things that uh, huh. it's not the standard therapy. It's not radiation. It's not chemotherapy. What's, and what's so your hope? What's your hope? 
this technology? Well, my hope is that uh, I, I know the benefit it can provide, and I'm hoping that it can survive to the point where we can really get it in practice and use for those patients who can best benefit by it. Should this be part of the standard operating procedure as a complementary treatment therapy? Yes, this should be. I mean, in the Netherlands, they conducted a phase three clinical trial of this deep hyperthermia, and it is now standard therapy as a complement to radiation therapy for cervix cancer. It's standard there, standard care. Uh, in Germany uh, and throughout Europe, they conducted a, a randomized phase three trial on uh, soft tissue sarcomas of both the leg and, and the pelvic and abdominal region. And it is now standard therapy in many of the area, areas there where uh, because of the success of those studies, uh, centers that do treatments of soft tissue sarcoma, for example, in Germany, they're not allowed to treat those patients unless they either have this type of system or have an alliance with a neighboring facility that can add this Contact treatment yeah. to that uh, treatment that they're doing with chemotherapy. Good. And so that's uh, positive and it helps, but uh, it's, it's in those locations in standard care. Eventually, hopefully, it'll become standard care in the United States.